Hey everybody, welcome to episode three of The Cud. Uh, today we're talking about postmortem. So by far and away, the number one question that I get all the time across all the different social medias of people that follow me is why do I do so many postmortems or necropsies or autopsies? Although I don't like to say the word autopsy because autopsy means to do a necropsy on, on something that's like oneself. That's the only way that you can do an autopsy. You have to be the same species. So a necropsy or a postmortem, so an after death. Why do I I do so many of them. I'm a consulting veterinarian and part of the entire comprehensive consulting package is doing postmortem diagnosis. We, we have this comprehensive package of consulting and setting up protocols and doing implant checks and chronic pen management and crew training and all of these different things and postmortem is just a small part of that that we do and what the postmortem is is we go in on every animal that, that's under our consulting practice kind of umbrella. Any animal that dies within our practice is gets a postmortem done because it really helps us make our recommendations the best possible. So when we're setting up treatment protocols, when we're setting up processing protocols like I was doing all day today, what it does is all that information goes into a health software program, allows us to pull out all this different data on different individual farms and then also globally on a, on a benchmark scale. It allows us to just really nail down exactly what those treatments should be and if there's any changes or tweaks. But it also, in a real-time perspective allows me to know what's going on inside of a pen. From a pen level basis, if all of a sudden I'm getting a specific set of diseases that are, are all of a sudden showing up, that allows me to make these real-time decisions on a pen level, whether we're going to vaccinate in the face of disease or pulse with antibiotics or do some sort of management change to, to fix that. So that's why it's so important. And yes, it does seem like that I do a whole bunch of postmortems, but really the percentage varies uh, on percentage mortality in the feeding cattle feedlot industry would any be anywhere between 0.2% uh, on a really good feedlot that's buying super quality calves all the way up to like 4%. Uh, some lots not within our practice could be even higher. There's some lots or at least uh, pens within lots in the states that could have mortality 5-6%. I just had to switch over to my phone because this thing died and I was on such a rant. And then overall our practice takes care, literally takes care of hundreds of thousands of animals, hundreds of thousands of animals are under our umbrella as a as a consulting vet so so say two percent on a hundred thousand that's still gonna be two thousand postmortems so that's not bad it's just because the sheer volume of our practice is so big uh, it's not necessarily that there's more calves dying that's why there's more, more postmortems being done that I hope answers why I do postmortems. Question of the day. If you have cattle, do you routinely get a postmortem done on every animal that dies that is a non-obvious cause of death? Let me know.